March 2012, a car drives into a truck hauling gasoline on Maha Loop, exploding into this fiery scene. A few months later, another tanker veers off the highway near Slaughter Lane, spilling thousands of gallons of ethanol and forcing a day-long cleanup and a major traffic backup on the state's most congested stretch, I-35 in Austin. Just a few of the hundreds of tankers carrying chemicals every week, driving on the city's busiest roads and risking your safety. Now we reveal there is a state requirement to designate a special route for those trucks. The idea is to take them and their hazardous cargo away from the city center, your family and your commute. But KXA and investigator Robert Maxwell discovered there's a dangerous delay with this plan. If you're like me and you play the I-35 commuter game every weekday, you know it can be a little disconcerting at times to have a big rig floating along beside you. If it's carrying hazardous materials, there's probably a placard saying what's inside is explosive or flammable. You best keep your distance, right? If one of those goes off the road, the smart money is it's going to be catastrophic, not only for you and me, but for the thousands of commuters caught in the backup. Federal estimates show four in every 10 commercial carriers moving through Austin are hauling some sort of hazardous material from across the nation, from corrosive acid, toxic paint products, to highly flammable gas and oil products. Crashes involving hazardous cargo on Austin's big roads are rare, but they still happen. October 30th, 2010, this dramatic early morning tanker crash shut down a major interchange at US 183 in Mopac. One of the first responders was Austin firefighter Palmer Buck. He realized the importance of cooling the four-level overpass, knowing the intense heat from the 9,500-gallon gas bomb threatened the structure's very stability. From the hazardous materials approach, we want to make sure that we deal with the chemicals or the runoff, um, as well as mitigate the fire going on. And once we, you know, the, cause taking care of the fire is only a small part of the incident. Austin's blown up by more than 26 percent in just 15 years, from 656,000 to more than 890,000 today. When Austin surged past the 850,000 mark two years ago now, it was required to have a route for dangerous cargo, but that hasn't happened. There just isn't a route for, for the cargo that is right now going up and down I-35. I think we, we all are in agreement that I-35 is not the best place for hazardous cargo. However, where's the, where's a better place for them to be? And those are when uh, you've got some tough decisions. Travis County's emergency management chief, Pete Baldwin, says he wants to see those decisions made quickly. In other major Texas centers, like here in San Antonio, there are long established hazardous materials routes. They're marked by this sign that takes truckers carrying dangerous cargo around the more densely populated core. So why isn't there already a hazmat designated route in Austin? In the spring of 2013, Austin City Council asked the same question and ordered transportation staff to assess the public health risk from the transport of hazardous materials through Austin. The result, a call for the first survey of high-risk truck traffic in 15 years. Yet more than a year and a half later, that has yet to happen. Why hasn't anything been done? Well, we continue to take steps uh, to move forward. We've been in discussions with the Texas Transportation Institute about assisting us with that study. We subsequently heard that they would not have the resources available to do that. What's council's role in this? They would be involved, of course. The study could be anywhere from 200000 to a million dollars. We need to identify the source for that. They would have to approve any contract, so they would be involved. The city's transportation department says the delay is not all city leaders' fault. The state should step up. One might take the view that maybe someone on a bigger scale should be looking at this as holistically for the whole state. And helping guide it? And helping guide it. Funding the studies so that they can be done in a timely fashion. Knock on wood, you know, we haven't had a major incident occur here. It's a gamble. Yeah, it's a gamble. Now, given the delays facing the city of Austin on a hazmat route, we've reached out to state lawmakers. Austin Senator Kirk Watson, the city's former mayor, says leaders have assured him they're working on a plan, but the whole thing is time consuming. At least two public meetings and coordinating with TxDOT and other cities within a 25 mile radius of the proposed route. In a statement, he says this, given the city's commitment and the complicated nature of this process, I do not plan to file any legislation on this topic at this time. 
However, he says it will continue to monitor the situation to ensure that the city of Austin meets its responsibility in what he calls a timely fashion. And we will, of course, follow up with the senator as this legislative session plays out and as our new city council here gets settled in and considers the issue. Robert Maxwell, KXAN Investigates. Robert, thank you. And tonight at 10, we continue our investigation as Robert looks into a possible plan for a hazmat route in Austin. Everything that's going through needs to be on 130. It's such a clear solution. We will lay out the challenges to this idea tonight on KXAN News at 10. And remember, if you have something you want us to investigate, email us at reportit at kxan.com.